Konnichiwa minasan. A lot of people have commented on videos about how do I have permanent residency in Japan and how I'm able to stay in this beautiful country. The short answer is, I'm not able to stay well beyond my current visa. That being said, I have done my research, looked at a bunch of various options, and so what I'll do in this video is tell you a bit about where I'm coming from, a bit about what I've learned along the way, and what are some of the options available to you. Of course, I'm not an immigration or an emigration expert. I'm not a lawyer, so take it at face value. But I have been living abroad for years, and I do travel a lot. So I hope you enjoy. Cheers. A bit about my background. After school, I worked for the Canadian federal government in defense procurement, as well as a bit of the Canadian Space Agency, our version of NASA, before jumping into the private sector. I had a good job and a career path but I wanted to see the world and traveling three weeks a year just wasn't enough for me. I would get back from vacation and start dreaming of the next destination. While sitting in my windowless gray cubicle, I would dream of scuba diving with manta rays, climbing the Japanese Alps or feasting in Europe. So my wife and I decided to take a break and spend one year traveling before going back to our careers. We actually started our travels in Japan. She had never been, didn't know what to expect, but we obviously fell in love with the place, but we didn't stay. We actually ended up in Indonesia where we realized we wouldn't be moving back to Canada anytime soon. Meeting a group of hyper entrepreneurial friends, we decided to build a scuba diving resort, which had been a dream for a long time and could now become a reality. We moved to a patch of desert and lived in a tent for eight months while building the now beautiful Kalamaya Dive Resort near the Komodo National Park. Sorry for the shameless plug, but hey, it's our baby. Check it out. We later moved to Bali and were able to put in systems to assist the business from afar. So I'm very fortunate to have a position where I have extreme flexibility in timing, allowing me to travel and mainly do my work via WhatsApp. Fast forward to today, I have this beautiful house and I have long-term plans to be here. As I mentioned in a previous video, one of the awesome things about Japan is that foreigners can purchase a house and it will be registered in their name and own it forever. Many other countries in Southeast Asia, Indonesia included, have barriers in place to prevent foreign ownership or investment. I have reservations about investing my entire life savings in something that at the end of the day, I wouldn't even own. That being said, even though foreigners can own a house, this does not lead to residency. That still needs to be figured out. There are many ways to get to Japan. The first and sometimes easiest option to spend time here is tourism, but this isn't residency. As a Canadian, I'm able to spend 90 days at a time in Japan visa free. I can come in, I can see my house, fix it up, and then fly back to either Bali or Kalamaya to work, or I can fly somewhere else to meet up with my family. Flights within Asia are relatively cheap if planned correctly. It is possible to get a visa for six months if applied for in advance or even a long stay visa for up to three years. I haven't needed to do this, but yeah, I am looking into it. The Japanese consulate in Bali is super helpful and they helped me process a business visa last summer with the help of a Japanese sponsoring company. Getting back to residency, you need a sponsor. You need somebody to vouch for you for your stay in Japan. And three of the ways I'm going to talk about are study, work, or marry. Study visas are a great way where you can stay and even work in Japan. It can either be at a university if you're so inclined or at a language school where you study Japanese for about five hours a day in the morning and then you have the afternoon and evenings to work, study more, and enjoy living in Japan. There are a lot of institutions throughout the country where they offer this as a product and you pay, they sponsor your visa and you get to come in. They often help to find accommodation and even work locally so that you can actually fully integrate within the society. A lot of people mainly go for the big cities I understand, so whether it's Osaka or Tokyo, my friends primarily ended up there, but there are a lot of other big cities even throughout Japan where this is an option. I have friends that have studied in Fukuoka, Kobe, Sendai, Sapporo, and these are all amazing cities. I personally like the countryside. An hour down the road, there are language schools, so this is an option. Studying does not work towards your permanent residency,
but it does give the opportunity to stay, to meet people, and explore the next two ways which you could get permanent residency, or at least start working towards the requirements. The second option for residency is a bit more complicated, not in paperwork or internal processes, but it's to marry somebody from Japan, find a place you want to live, and settle down and enjoy life. A spouse-sponsored visa is an option, and it's not very expensive. I think it's about $80 a year until you have your permanent residency. But finding somebody who wants to marry you, that's a challenge which I'll leave that to you. And the third option I will mention here is work. Have a company sponsor you or build your own company and be your own sponsor. Getting a job in Japan is possible, but it can be a challenge. And if you don't speak Japanese, it'll be even harder. One common route where friends have had success in moving to Japan without being able to speak Japanese with a job waiting for them is teaching. After finishing university, a number of friends have come to Japan through the JET program where they would then teach English as a second language in schools, high schools, elementary schools throughout Japan. They would use this time and over the next following years to learn Japanese, make contacts, and then transition or jump to other professions, different industries, or even start their own businesses. One very interesting option is to start your own business. There are a few types of business that are available to you. One is to start a Goro Kaisha, which is a GK, or a, it's a partnership, or a Kabushuki Kaisha, which is a, more similar to a limited liability company. Both have a number of requirements, such as a registered office, employment, and they require 5 million yen in a Japanese bank account. At that point, once the company is set up, which can take anywhere between six weeks or as little as 10 days if you pay a little bit extra as I have been quoted you can actually start the company come in as a management visa and you can be your own sponsor that being said starting a company in Japan it is not a shell company it will be verified thoroughly by the government you'll need to file taxes in Japanese you will need to do work make money and as a business, it has to be successful for your residency to be extended past the initial grant. If you have a good idea, and better yet some Japanese friends to help you along the way, I say go for it. The 5 million yen investment is not lost by any means. It is what's used to then start your business and get it running off the ground. In theory, this could actually be used to purchase your IKEA if your company is set up and or written the correct way. But for that, you would actually need to talk to a Japanese legal team. Once landed with either of the previous two forms of residency mentioned, it's time to start working towards permanent residency. There is a point-based system where it is possible to get permanent residency in a single year. You need, I believe, 70 points, of which you get 15 points for speaking Japanese at an N1 testing level. You get 30 points for having a doctorate degree, whereas an MBA only qualifies you for 25 points. And then you get a number of points for how much you're going to earn if your age is below a certain level. So you're going to provide more to the Japanese economy over the course of your life, I guess, is their argument. And it's quite complicated and I don't think it'll apply to me, but I will include a link in the description. One year to permanent residency is extremely rare. More often than not, and I might be wrong on this, it takes 10 years to get your permanent residency if you tick all the boxes. So you have to get here, start working, full-time employment for 10 years, keep it going. When you apply, if you have missed a bill payment in the previous, I think, three years, you don't get residency. If you're late, you don't get it. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into this criterion, but residency has a lot of benefits. So. It has healthcare, free education for children, even children of foreigners, which is a massive driving factor in why we're coming here. And then, yeah, if you have the time, you have your next 10 years, you'll still be here, you'll be earning, keep going, start chipping it away the time, and in no time, you might be a permanent resident. Sadly, I don't know of any form of retirement visa for people wanting to retire to Japan but maybe it will be something they will look at in the future. For now, any of you that are currently going through this issue, I wish you the best of luck, keep at it. And for everybody else, thank you very much for your support. Let me know if there's anything you want to discuss, have a little fireside chat about, and we'll go from there. Thank you, cheers.